The opinions expressed here are those of the individual participants. Curry Coast Community Radio takes no position on issues discussed in this program. Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where local community members discuss a wide range of topics from serious to whimsical. My name is Ray Gary, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Curry Cafe. Curry Cafe, we discuss all types of things, but today we have a kind of a special show. As most of you are probably aware, we recently had a special election in the community to uh, remove three people from the city council, the mayor and two council members. However, in spite of the fact that, that this vote to remove these people was well over 70%, uh, there are some people in the community that have some problems. So I've gathered today some of the um, leading experts in the in the community to discuss this matter. And if we can start at my left and go clockwise around, everybody can introduce themselves and give a little history about yourself. Thank you, Ray. I will start since I, I think I'm on your left side. Um, my name is Candace Michelle, and I have a, a show here at KCIW called Our Community. Um, And the reason why I was interested in being part of this discussion was because um, as media for KCIW, I have been in every single one of the meetings that have taken place, uh, city council meetings, whether they were workshops or regular council meetings or executive sessions. I've been in every one of them since this whole Janelle Howard issue started, um, which was back in, geez, July of 22. (laughs) It seems incredible that it's been nearly a year and a half, but it has. Um, So I'm I'm very pleased to be able to join this discussion and, and talk about, you know, what's happened and what the recall election aftermath is. Uh, My name is Dennis Triglia. Uh, Many of you may know me. Hi. Uh, I was the uh, chief petitioner behind the uh, committee to recall Hedenskog, uh, which was successful, as had been indicated, by about 71% to 29%. Um, I I have some serious concerns about the council's action post-recall election, and I'm hoping to get a a chance to discuss it uh, at this uh, meeting here. Thank you for inviting me. This is Robert O'Sullivan. Uh, my background is I was both a high school English and social studies teacher, as well as a Lutheran pastor. And I come from a little different perspective on this whole issue uh, because I've become kind of a strong advocate for St. Tim's, the, the Episcopal Church here in Brookings, which has been, to use a mild term, harassed by the city government for quite a while. And uh, we're going to have a conversation today, but to really get started, I think people need to know a little more of the background. And since Candace has been following this from the get-go, could you tell us a bit about what both happened at the council meeting and the background behind it? Okay, so I'm going to try and squish it a year and a half into like two minutes. Good luck. (laughs) <laughs> um, which would be really interesting. So um, July 4th of t- 2022, Janelle Howard, who is our city manager, was arrested for shoplifting at Fred Meyer. Um, then everything kind of went crazy. Uh, she was put on administrative leave. Uh, an interim city manager was hired, who was Gary Milliman, uh, who had been our city manager for years. Um, then the council hired uh, Ferreris Investigations to do an administrative investigation while the criminal proceedings against Howard um, took their course. Um, according to former city councilor John McKinney, Ferreris found at least six instances of infractions by Howard that were cause for termination with cause. Council initially voted three to two to start termination talks. Then Michelle Morosky reversed her vote in the next meeting. 
Uh, soon after, Gary Milliman left as interim city manager, and Christy Worcester was hired again as an interim. Uh, former city councilor Brad Alcorn was elected county commissioner, vacated his council seat last November, and Mayor Hedenskog, who has now been recalled, uh, appointed Isaac Hodges to Alcorn's seat, and he took his seat in the end of November-ish. Um, newly elected Councillor Andy Martin took John McKinney's vacant seat, and that was, he was seated in January. By the end of January, Council had come up with a new contract for Howard, approved with a four-to-one vote, with Hodges voting no. And that's when the city outrage began. People just couldn't believe that the city council had actually put a thief back into office. So that's the that's the short history. <laughs> and believe me, it was painful being in those meetings. It was painful. If I could just yeah. add one little thing to that, the uh, the city reinstated the uh, city manager, who is actually the CEO of the city, and all departments work for her, including the police department. And she could not pass the background check to be a dispatcher. Yeah, it's it's pretty appalling, really. Um, you know, we had a, a policeman, um, Brian Holmes, resigned. Um, we've had city staff resign. You know, the the police department is clearly um, outraged, although they won't obviously come right out and say that because she's their boss. So they have to be careful. But, um, yeah, asking the, the police to work for somebody who flouts the law seems pretty ridiculous. But So at this last council meeting, um, the, the recall has gone through, and, you know, Dennis can talk much more about that whole process and how many people participated and across the board kind of thing. Um, and at this last council meeting, what they did was appointed somebody instead of having an election, so... Here we are. Dennis, you want to yeah, wanna uh, yeah I, go I'd, a little I'd bit like into... to weigh in here. Yeah. Uh, what they what they basically did, they may think is legal, but there are a lot of components that are illegal. Um, one for, first and foremost, the Brookings City Charter is basically the constitution of our city. They take an oath of office to defend the Oregon Constitution, the United States Constitution, the Brookings City Charter, and all of its ordinances. Yes. Yet. It clearly states in Article 4, Section 20 of the, uh, uh, of the city charter that an election must be held when it, when it results in lack of a quorum. I don't have the exact words in front of me, but basically we are guaranteed that. In fact, Janelle Howard herself, in her other duties as local elections officer, not a conflict of interest mm -hmm. to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and um, also a city recorder, we had to go through her for everything. Uh, she did not help us at all while we were gathering signatures. In fact, she delayed the transmission of the signatures to Shelley Denny, the Curry County clerk, for a, a couple of weeks before she even got them. Now, we, were, we had already, in 30 days, collected more than sufficient, 30% more than enough signatures when we had 90 days to do it. So we knew that there was a lot of support in the community. How many signatures did you collect? Do you remember? Uh, we needed uh, 463, if I recall, and uh, Hedenskog uh, topped 600. Wow. And the others were between 590 and 599, mm -hmm. if, I, if I recollect. Wow. Um, uh, what was a little bit... Um, Confusing in the beginning is when the results were first it, first uh, relayed to the public, it basically looked like we only had 10 more signatures than we needed. But upon furthering checking, uh, upon further checking with Shelley Denny, the Curry County clerk, she said that they stopped they stopped adding up the numbers or, or verifying signatures once they knew that they had a certain amount more than the the uh, necessary minimum number uh, after they throughout some signatures. And that kind of makes sense, right? I mean, you know, if you 
if you know that you have to get to 475, for instance, right. and you're already at 485, you know you've gotten, you've passed the threshold. Right. But on the other hand... Right. Why well, not count them all? Yeah, right? Why not count them all? Oh, that's, that's a good point. But, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, this is the, the same Curry County clerk who is taking the full 27 statutory days allotted to her to confirm the results of an election that would are would be a blowout by any other means and so could she the, have confirmed it much quick, more quickly yes, yes she could have um uh, she might have to wait for if there were any out of uh, out of town ballots or out of country ballots in case we have servicemen or or whatever serving that that wish to vote and um uh she chose after conversing on several occasions with Janelle Howard to do it on the last possible day. Wow. Now, I'm not saying that Shelley is uh, is guilty of anything. I don't even want to imply that. Mm -hmm. She was always super nice to me. She allowed me to, to watch the verification of signatures. And it's not signatures. illegal for her to take every single day that that's she That's absolutely That's absolutely correct. That's right. absolutely correct. But why? Yeah, I know. And there were probably no more than 6,000 votes counted. And 2,000. Yeah. Well, three times over. I mean... Well, yes, in total, in if you're, you're going to count 2,000 for this person, 2,000 for yeah. that person. Yeah. Uh, and why, I mean, the results were announced rather quickly, but why take 27 days or whatever to because certify that? Because uh, you can. Yeah. It, it, she is allowed that statutorily by law, and she mm -hmm. is abiding by law. Right. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, in I mean, it would be law. one thing if it were a close mm -hmm. election i mean if the difference between right, right, right. was like a small margin right. and, and remember she didn't win. call the election these were unofficial right results that were that were released immediately and right. and to her credit and, and the and her staff who did an excellent job also uh, they they did get the vote totals up faster than i had ever seen i mean it doesn't take much minutes. to run them through their um, their machines i think it was about 15 minutes yeah it was um which was faster than any other election that we had yeah um personally i was disappointed in the turnout but it's not 38% or so of the of the voters voted but that's not that unusual considering that this election was a not as critical a year as, a, let's say, a presidential year or general election in, in a presidential uh, year. But I'll tell you, Dennis, I went back and looked at the numbers because I was, that was the thought that went through my brain as well. And the reality is that we weren't that far under the national election in 2022. We were, for who voted in Brookings. It was hmm. not that much higher. Yeah, I think uh, in general for a recall election, um, I don't think as many, maybe as many people would have voted, or maybe they just didn't think. Mm -hmm. But but to me, it just it, it just hit a little close, knowing that six in ten voters in Brookings didn't even bother to vote on something so critical as this. Yeah. Yet currently, the um, the Curry Coastal Pilot has a poll as to when when this is basically all over and done with. Would you expect the, or would you desire that the um, new city council replace Janelle Howard? It's currently 92.3% yes and 7% uh, no. Um, well, so, that was the whole point. But they that ignore was, us I completely. Know, I know, I know. Getting I mean, back yeah. to the delay in, in uh, certification, the one perhaps coherent argument that the council members had for doing what they did was claiming that uh, without a quorum on the council, uh, the city would be paralyzed, that if there were a great emergency, uh, we'd all be on our own. And the delay in the uh, certification is all part of that. Uh, it's all going to take so long because they took something that could have been probably done in one day, uh, not happening till what was it, 27? Mm -hmm. Isn't there something fishy about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it I, might not I, be illegal, but uh, it's not good government. And it, this was the only election there was going on, wasn't it? Well, there, there was, was one in uh, Port Orford and there was one in Gold Beach. Um, but this was the only one in Brookings mm -hmm. that was 
that was going on. But, you know, y- yes, um, certainly there is an argument that says the city government would stop if there was not a quorum on council. But when you look at that a little more closely, if the city government will stop because there's not a full council, what do we have as staff then? Because staff should be able to run the city government. They have that's, jobs. That, they have, that's, that's their job to do that. So realistically, the council may make some decisions, some policy decisions, but the budget's already been passed. I mean, everybody knows what they're doing. So why would the wheels of government grind to a halt? Uh, they, they wouldn't. It, this was pure fear-mongering at its worst, uh, and uh, fear-based tactics and uh, calls that it will wreak havoc on the city. The city can no longer function. And Andy Martin fell right into their trap, yep, right into uh, it. which just shows how naive he is and what a poor leader he is, is turning out to be. Um, I have uh, been contacted by a number of people uh, since the, the the night of uh, the um, uh, the shenanigans that they pulled, uh, where they overthrew the uh, Brookings City Charter, and um, uh, it, it was it, it was just shocking to me that I I really I, I unplugged completely for two days after that just uh, to to get my thoughts uh, straight again. Um, they uh, the they need to fear us not the other way around. They need to respect us. They need to listen to us. And Andy, despite his claims of transparency, Mm -hmm. turns around and does exactly what he did together with Isaac Hodges, who has badmouthed KCIW, claiming that KCIW is biased in their reporting, which is complete malarkey. (laughs) Um, And and, and and they were all given... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ken. uh, (laughs) And they were all given the opportunity to resign. And they didn't resign then. So now they can resign and then get rewarded by appointing their own successors? This is I know. crazy. I know. The, it's this madness. city council has a long history, or at least as long as I know, I've been here six years, of not caring what the community thinks. Uh, when I first moved here, there was an issue I thought I would go and see what it was all about. And I happened to mention to somebody I was going. And they said, oh, that's a waste of time. They've already decided and they don't care what you have to say. And in the next six years, I've probably been to a dozen meetings and certainly seen that to be the case. And in one case, there was a there was a, a person who was speaking and speaking very well, I might add, uh, to the mayor. And the mayor wasn't looking at her; he was sitting, he was looking down, scribbling on a piece of paper like he was taking notes. And even after she pointed out to him that he wasn't paying attention, he still continued to scribble notes until. I guess he figured, oh, I'm I'm overdoing it. And and he did then at least look at her. And this is not, you know, we do have people who come to the city council and talk gibberish or talk about nothing. This was a very intelligent woman who was speaking very well. So he should have been paying attention. A little of the background of recall is um, early in the 20th century, uh, most state legislatures and most governments were controlled in big time ways by large companies, by railroads, by uh, big trusts. And there was a progressive movement to reform. And part of that reform had to do with developing antitrust legislation and that. But part of it had to do with developing such things as uh, initiative, referendum, and recall. And they were thought to be progressive, positive uh, things to do. That hasn't always happened that way, and that's partially because of the enormous influence of money in influencing elections. And in some cases, uh, most notably in California, when a governor, governor was recalled, people were on the ballot at the same time to replace them. Hmm. It wasn't any... 60, Mm -hmm. 90, whatever long days. Mm -hmm. So it it happens differently in different places. And just as referendum and initiative have been abused big time, largely, again, because of big money, uh, they are not necessarily progressive reforms. But you would think that anyone who goes to vote for a recall election who expects that they'll be able to choose the successors of those recalled 
cannot do it because of what has to be a clearly defined as a conspiracy to undermine the will of the voters yeah. and essentially to nullify two elections, one that happened and was overwhelming and one that they stopped from happening. Mm -hmm. Now, is that appropriate behavior by local officials? Well, it certainly isn't what I would call transparency, <laughs> Isaac, nor um, is it is it government by f and for the people? I mean, that it, it's not representative government, folks. It's kind right? of an interesting thing about transparency. One of the last meetings they had with the full council, for some reason or other, this uh, idea of transparency came up, and everybody was agreeing, yes, we have to be transparent, we have to, have to be more transparent. And when that was all done, somebody in the audience says, can I ask a question? And the mayor very angrily said, no. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. So much for transparency. So much for transparency. Yeah, as well, long as you keep your mouth shut, we get transparent. <laughs> and our former mayor also used to shush a lot of people who would get up to talk. And yeah. that really bothered the audience, made people and future speakers very nervous. You could see them trembling up at the mic. It might have been the first time that they're there. And, of course, the people are looking up at the big dais in front of them yeah. on which the kings and queens <laughs> sit. Designed for just exactly. that purpose. And it's yeah. designed to make the public feel smaller. Right. At one point, I pointed out to the, the council when I was serving on the council between 2016 and 2019 that to look at their organizational chart. They have the city council at the very top. And I suggested putting the people of Brookings at the very top. They would not go along with it. And you know what is mind-blowing about that is that the county has the people at the top. Exactly. The county. Exactly. Right? Exactly. The state has right. the people at the top. How Come. does the Constitution begin? We yeah, the we people. We the people. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, except in Brookings. Yeah. Oh. And, yeah. It's so, in tiny print. You have to look real close. So somebody said... Brookings, the place where democracy comes to die. Uh, that was the best response I had. Yeah. And it, it couldn't be more true. Yeah. And the other one that I um, have heard or came up with was no taxation without representation. Should we even be paying our property taxes when we're not being oh. properly represented? This goes back to the American Revolution even before the period that right. uh, that you were just referring uh, right. um, um, Sorry, Absolutely. Robert was just referencing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, and, and to his point also, Oregon became a state in 1859 in, I think it was 1906 or 1909. Um, Article 2, Section 18 of the Oregon State Constitution gave the people the right to recall. It's been somewhat a little bit modified a few times mm -hmm. over the over the century, but um, it's in there. So the people way back then did think that that was important. And what I think is re remarkable about this recall is that Number one, it it crossed all lines. We had progressives, we had conservatives, we had religious, non-religious, we had everybody. We had the cops, for heaven's sake, all on the same page about this. And it's all because the former city councilors all decided to keep Janelle Howard on, who is a thief, as city manager. So, and, who, and who was the impetus, really, when yes. you look at it, behind the recall? Although yes. we didn't mention it as a stated reason, we, we, we did put that in, that the ones who were recalled were basically criminal enablers. Yes. And, um, and should be recalled. 70% of the public agreed. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing to have 70% mm -hmm. of the vote. In a rural conservative yes. area. Yes. Uh, general, generally. Yep. Uh, uh, purple exactly. Maybe, but, um, exactly. Right. Okay. No, uh, a, a little that should be said about what happened recently is this, what probably can accurately be described as a coup, uh, happened with very short public notice. Oh, yeah. Uh, less than 26 hours before the council meeting, uh, a one, not even a sentence, a, a, a short description saying uh, about upcoming appointment or, or, or something. It wasn't to that even effect. that. It was discussion about recall election. I mean, like that, that was 
There wasn't even any appointment in there. There was no clue. And no supporting documentation, a single nebulous line. And that's supposed to serve as as notice. First of all, they violated the uh, the notice law. So there's there's one uh, potential crime or or offense that they've uh, that they've committed. They also have clearly violated the open meetings law because there's no way that they could have choreographed this without meeting behind closed doors. And they had so many executive sessions during the period when Janelle was on administrative leave, an excessive amount, and this is Head & Skog's doing, mm-hmm. um, they know that they can't get away with an executive session because there are only seven reasons under the Oregon State Constitution for which an executive session is appropriate. They're conniving and uh, discarding the um, the city's constitution, in essence, um, and and for and for Andy Martin to make the statement that well I don't feel that we should have had a government. It's not up to you to feel. It's up to you to follow the law, follow what the people expected. They voted in that election expecting to have a special election, which was guaranteed by yes. verbal communication with a reporter from Janelle Howard. They wanted the right, as they are entitled to to select their own candidates and have people apply for office the way everybody does. A a short hiatus, if you will, or, or whatever, of, of, of the lack of a quorum. The, the city charter spells out how to handle it, and they ignored completely what to do. It's not within their right to do that. And as I mentioned before, they did take an oath to, um, to defend this. So my, my biggest thing is... The fact that they just willy-nilly choose the laws that they want to do, whereas if any of us seated here, seated here tonight tried to get away with that, we'd end up in a lot more trouble than they. And they're rewarded by, uh, by ha- choosing their own successors. This is garbage. It's too bad that uh, the state of Oregon doesn't have a RICO Act like the state of Georgia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It Absolutely. would be an absolute <laughs> slam dunk to convince any jury that at least six people conspired to do this. And if they were at any sense open to transparency, they maybe would have said, okay, we think this has to be done. It's an emergency, but we want to let you know we're doing this. So we'll call a special session a week from now. And of course, uh, they probably could never pull it off by doing that, but that would be transparency. No, exactly. You don't say something's transparency just by saying it, you no. have to show some ability for the people to clearly see what you're doing and doing it in a timely, lawful way. And giving people notice that you're going to do it. Sure. I that's mean, that, basic. I, I wrote a, an email to both uh, Hodges and Martin after that meeting because I was so disappointed in what they had done. As did I. And, of course, neither one of them have bothered to respond to mm-hmm. my email, not that I actually expected them, but, um, but to call what they did being transparent was laughable. Um, transparency is when you sit there and say to your constituents who are watching you, look, this is the dilemma we're facing. This is what we think. This is what we're afraid of. This is what we're concerned about. And this is the route that we would like to take because this seems to tick all the boxes. That would have been transparency. That way we would know, we in the audience would know what they were thinking. Not that we would agree with them necessarily, but we would know what they were thinking. There was no way that any of us could possibly know what they were thinking. And and. Isaac nominates Christy Fulton, who I don't know her. I, I've never met the woman. She could be a saint for all I know. But the reality is that for the two and a half years that I've been at every single city council meeting, she's never been there. So, right? Yeah, I, w- with respect to, uh, to Christy Fulton... I, I don't know her personally. Uh, I have heard that she's worked with the schools and uh, I think is currently a counselor at one of the schools, which is great. So she, she may turn out to be a good counselor, but I have to call her a counselor in quotes because she wasn't put there legally. 
and um, I have absolutely nothing against her. I really hope that she will turn out to be uh, to be good. And I don't tend to prejudge people, so I, but I have to. It was clear I, she was part of the conspiracy. I, she. I, showed up with friends to be there and accept it. You just don't show up at a meeting that you've never been to before. <laughs> and, and I don't think it makes much of a difference about anything, but two of the counselors said that she was their, their ninth grade teacher. Yes. That's Yeah, exactly. And Again, cronyism. Yes, perhaps. again. Perhaps. Crony- perhaps. Well, perhaps. it kind of is. If you knew, if you, if you know each other, if you grew up together, mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of is. But in a democracy, the people are allegedly supposed to choose yes. their leaders. Exactly. Yeah. And whether yeah. she's a wonderful person or not is not the question. It's not the point. Exactly. Uh, the question is, uh, do you respect the rule of law or not? Right. Which gets me to the uh, the question of St. Tim's. Uh, I found myself in a funny role of having to explain to the council basic things about constitutional government. What's in the First Amendment, what's in the Oregon Constitution, and what's in a federal law called the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act, which was unanimously approved by both houses of Congress in the year 2000 and has been clearly upheld by the law by the courts ever since. And these, this, that law and the state and federal constitution guarantee the right of religious people to exercise their faith with no intervention by the government. That's a big chunk of the basis of our own liberty, that the government should stay out of trying to legislate speech, uh, assembly, the right of redress of grievance, the, uh, the establishment of religion or the free exercise thereof, and you just don't do something that defies all of those and say you're acting appropriately. And I've had to it's school them on that. you would and, actually have to tell them that, right? <laughs> well, one, one would think that they should know that yeah. or have learned it, and maybe since the uh, new council member is apparently married to a civics teacher, she will know a little better, but we'll have to see what, what goes on there. But St. Tim's has had enormous persecution, being threatened to be fined $720 a day until they stop certain ministries at that church. Since when does a city council have a right to decide what ministries are appropriate and when in a church? And uh, they've also, uh, based on a very, very spurious argument, uh, tried to argue that uh, they can control how often the church feeds people because they found some dictionary definitions that says a church is a place for Christian worship. A building. A building for Christian worship. As though that were the only thing. (laughs) Now, the Oxford English Dictionary, which they cited, happens to be a 20-volume set, which I (laughs) happen to own, and I looked up what they had for church. Uh They had five pages in very tiny print, Mm -hmm. giving 17 different sub-definitions and lots of examples of use over the years uh, that said the church was many things. But they go to the first definition and and then start arguing that uh, since when is a legal clinic or feeding people or uh, serving the poor uh, part of Christian worship. And if it's not, we can control them. That is utter constitutional nonsense and disgusting that they should uh, persecute a church in their community for being the place that many people know that those who are trying to get off their feet uh, can get some help. And part of their ministry there involves a person that is so wonderfully qualified to be doing it is she's a Brookings person with deep roots in the community. She's a lawyer. She's an ordained Lutheran deacon and is involved in things that have made her uh, recognized by the Oregon Bar Association for her service to the poor. And one should be proud that when much of Brookings shut down during COVID, that 
Brookings was the place to go to get help. We Thank got, you. I got my my shots there. Yep. If I needed a test, fortunately I didn't need one. I could have gotten it there. Yep. While virtually everything was shut down. Now, why persecute a church the way they have in defiance against constitutional and statutory law and get away with it? It's outrageous. No, it makes Robert, sense. and, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, but also isn't the Oregon state constitution even more clearly strength, so, s- uh, stronger than the U.S. constitution and, when it comes yes. to exercise of freedom uh, of religion? Yes. And one reporter uh, <laughs> uh, talked about my schooling the council on on the not, not directly on that subject that day, but on the whole idea of whether something was within their bailiwick. Yes. Bailiwick is a term that comes from Old English that originally had to do with uh, what authority a bailiff or sheriff had for a township and beyond its territory. Right. And it's come to mean over the years an area of expertise, of competence, of authority, of right. And I had to explain to them And uh, I ended my comments in simpler language saying, it's none of your business to do what you've been doing. You know, and and the reality is that, you know, again, because I was in all of those meetings, um, this all came about because there was a petition that was circulated by some of the neighbors. 29 people. At St. Tim's, that's correct. And what they, their motivation for this was that they wanted to get rid of the homeless from St. Tim's. They wanted the homeless to be gotten rid of. And there's a park right next to it where homeless were hanging out yes, as well. Exactly. Um, what what I found interesting about that was that instead of the city council actually dealing with what the issue was, which was that there were people that the neighbors were claimed that they were afraid of who were there at night in the evenings, they decided to legislate the services that St. Tim's could provide during the day. It's like, um, okay. So that made no sense to me whatsoever. As I understand it, part of what got some of this happening was the city asked the churches to allow people who were living in their cars to live in their cars in church parking lots. And only St. Tim's did that, and some of the people who did that were perhaps uh, a little out of control sort of people. But this was all initiated by the city, but that's that was maybe a bad choice. But nonetheless, and that was- doesn't mean they had the right to start attacking right. not just how often they feed at the church, but everything they do, basically, right. short of worship, and who knows when they would start getting into that. And what about the other churches in town? Can they start saying, no, you can't do this, no, you can't can do this? That's none of their business. And it was during business. COVID that, that that whole thing with the, the car parking mm-hmm. in the parking lots was allowed. It was during COVID, the worst of COVID, where people actually needed to have a place where they could isolate if they were sick. Sure. So it, 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 it was like this, this snowball kind of thing that the council in their ignorance did not deal with appropriately and instead chose the topic that you could see that they really cared about, which was getting rid of the homeless, and fixated on that. Instead of coming to some kind of a Let's sit down and discuss this and figure out where the problem actually is. We have a city park right there, and that's where our unsheltered are living, not at St. Tim's. They're not living at St. Tim's. They're living in Azalea Park. So let's handle it. How do we handle it? I don't know. Maybe give them someplace else to be. Maybe someplace out of the rain, out of the cold. Give the unsheltered some place to be. To be warm during yeah. the winter? Yeah. yeah. Especially? And that, you know, to that be cool during the summer was not going be. to happen, right? I mean, that just was not. I, I just have a few, a few comments on this. I, I'm more, uh, you know, interested in, in the recall and, and, dis, and discussion there. But um, number one, you can't make a law discriminating against a specific group of people. You can't say, we're going to legislate homelessness away. 
Uh, this this happens with the uh, uh, another another case. Uh, I, I think it was in Grants Pass or or something. Mm. Or it might have been some somewhere mm-hmm. else where if the city doesn't have a shelter, which Head and Skunk told me on numerous occasions when I was a counselor that Brookings will never have a shelter for the homeless. Uh, they write um, a note. You can't give homeless people, or you can't give uh, uh, panhandlers or whatever um, any money from a moving car. Or, or or something along right. those lines. That's deliberately signaling out a portion of of the public. Yep. Um, I remember voting against it at the time, and um, I I warned them that this could be a First Amendment breach. They only care about the First Amendment when it concerns them. They don't care about our First Amendment rights. Uh, going back to what Ray said earlier, this has been chronic here, and right. I've been here almost ten years now. Right. Um. Uh. Constantly going to bed every night thinking things can get better, things can get better. When more and more people move in, they'll have different uh, wants and needs. We pay zero attention to our youth, uh, I, from uh, by not by our youth, I mean um, young adults, 18 mm-hmm. to 25. Um, I would really personally like to see somebody in that age group be seated on the council so that we could more... more uh, accurately address the needs of not only our aging population, which Brookings is is known for, but for our youth also. I mean, give them some things here that that will keep them here instead of when they hit 18, uh, moving off to Portland or uh, another uh, larger city just to get a job instead of having to work three jobs a day to, uh, to just make enough money. So, um, uh, number one, separation of church and state uh, is is a given, and they just don't understand that. It's fine to be a religious person and to ha- and to cons- and to have your religion as part of your decision making process. But when it comes to ruling against the church, now that's really low. That is really low, considering that the church has been there before a lot of these things had been enacted. Whenever they try to change the Brookings Municipal Code to suit their purposes against someone. It's wrong. I mean, unless it were a public health hazard or uh, or something else, which some people might consider, uh, you know, people walking around in the middle of the night to uh, to be that. But uh, but let's solve the problem. Exactly. Right. That right. That doesn't to legislate it. It doesn't solve it. Right. If we've got people who have got mental health issues Absolutely. and addiction issues, let's fix the problem. Let's not kick the can down the road. It's crazy. I cannot really prove this, but I think it's probably very true that there's no city in the size of Brookings in the entire country that has gotten more publicity over the last two years than Brookings. I know. And it's not because of the usual reasons, mass murder, uh, you know, not, gro- yet. Gross not, pro- yet. not yet, <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, it's because of the, these two issues, the, the one about the city manager and the one about St. Tim's. And uh, uh, some politicians have allegedly said over the years that uh, uh, if they got some negative press, well, I like it as long as they, they spelled my name right. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's the attitude of some people in Brookings that we can defy the Constitution, we can defy the law, uh, we do things differently here and get away with it because, and even if we get publicity, it's uh, uh, at least we're getting people know that we're here, and so what if some call us crookings? <laughs> so I'd, I'd like to <laughs> circle back for just a second, um, the recall, because uh, you used the word conspiracy. and I, I, Coup as well. Right. Um, and and I think that um, I think that what we saw last Monday night was definitely orchestrated. It was orchestrated and planned by someone, and not just one someone. I mean, I I think there at were least probably six. well, I, for sure there were at least three people pulling the strings. Now, I'm not sure exactly if there were more than that, but there were three that I know of mm-hmm. that were pulling the strings. I don't think that uh, Isaac Hodges and Andy Martin wanted to do something illegal or unethical, or I don't think they want, that wasn't their Maybe motivation. Maybe they didn't know any better. I think they didn't know any better, and I think that they were influenced by senior members mm-hmm. of council um, 
and we're basically not told the truth, right? This this is what's going to happen if we don't appoint. This is what's going to happen. Um, I don't think that uh, Ms. Fulton was involved in any way other than they had to have tapped her, and right? And contacted had, her and, and got her to agree her and, and got, got her to her show approval. up and bring some friends. Exactly. All of that stuff had to have happened behind the scenes. Now, they could argue that Janelle did it. I'm sure they will argue that. But they couldn't. That did not happen without them knowing about it. Andy and Isaac knew what was going to happen. And they the knew opening it seemed, meeting. Uh, their explanation seemed almost re- rehearsed. And, yes. I mean, they had bullet points they had to hit. Yes. And it had to be very careful so that even the dumbest person in the audience would buy it. It yep. wasn't, yeah, they were not speaking off the top of their head. No. There was and very even careful. having the city attorney on the line to assure the people that what was happening was perfectly legal. It was, it was just a little bit too pat. It was like watching a performance. And it was annoying, really annoying. I, I wouldn't say perfectly legal, despite her being an attorney, because as I mentioned before, there were some portions of this, so I'd have to look at her exact words. Mm-hmm. But uh, there are some portions of this that are definitely illegal. Um, and until I hear from somebody who uh, has a background in Oregon election law, I'm uh, uh, not going to personally accept as valid any appointees by this council. Uh, uh, You mentioned um, Hodges and Martin. They were duped, and they were most likely duped by Ron Hedgehog himself. And I am so glad. And Schreiber. And I am so glad that the head of the serpent is off and out. I agree. I agree. For the good of Brookings. And, and I think and, the, and real, forward. the real test of the pudding is going to be, okay, guys, you now have three people on council. You now have a quorum. Let's see if you actually terminate Janelle Howard. Because that <laughs> was the whole point. Didn't so, look like it to me. Well, that was <laughs> the whole point, <laughs> right? No, I'm, I, it didn't look at it. Like it during the meeting, or no? I I know, I know, and I think I think we will know for sure come the next council meeting if they make a a motion to terminate without cause. We will know, Uh, Candace. uh, If if I can just Mm -hmm. read uh, a short email that I got that 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 spoke to you from um, from one of the Brookings residents, right? He said, what made the recall successful, regardless of political persuasion, was a near universal disdain of Janelle Howard. If this is going to be successful moving forward, then her removal and that alone must be the focus of future efforts. It's the one rallying cry that virtually everybody agrees on. The latest pilot poll asked if a new city council is established in Brookings, should that council remove the existing city manager? And the response is 92.3% in favor to remove her as city manager. The only thing that everyone can get behind is getting rid of Janelle, period. That should be the lens through which everything else is evaluated, in my honest opinion. Yeah, and I, I so, certainly think that that is, that is where our focus needs to be in the short run, because that is what they should do. Well, and, and during the recall, many people ask me, why don't we just recall Janelle? Yeah, I said because we can't, uh, and that, yeah. you know, and well, that's that's where she, education comes why in. Why don't you just quit when all this started? She's she's created uh, no. an awful lot of commotion and expense for the city. Well, and, I'll tell you why it's money. Because if she actually resigns, she does not get her severance pay. If she is fired, if she's terminated, she gets five months severance pay, and she makes a good chunk of change. So. You know, it's money. It's absolutely money. And it's, you know, it's kind of appalling to me. There have been some people who've gotten a lot of media attention for scofflaw activity, uh, but usually they wind up losing their jobs and being exposed, and and they might find a new way to make money and what have you. But uh, it's kind of amazing that she has been actually profiting from from her uh, consistently 
questionable behavior. Yep. I mean, seven months of paid administrative leave? Yep. That's a pretty big chunk of change for doing nothing. I know. And she's still employed. I mean, that that's sort of the ultimate uh, scam show. Yep. Well, another ultimate scam show is talking about how expensive the recall election was when you look at her salary, for example. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, $30,000, which represents one twentieth of 1% of the fiscal year 2023-24 budget for the city of Brookings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's ridiculous. I, I, it was full of misinformation on their part. I, they blame us for misinformation. I'm a scientist. I go based on evidence, and I go where the evidence leads me to come up with a conclusion. Yep. I'm, I may not always be right in my interpretation of the facts, but I at least try to weigh everything and look to uh, look to a lot of my friends and, um, and confidants for um, consensus building. Uh, trying to make sure that if I have an idea that I'm, you know, they'll, they'll let me know if it's way out of line or, or not. And I, I feel that that made me a better person. I also got to meet people of all political persuasions who, who generally I might not have even spoken to. And we've become closer friends now than, uh, than before. So in a way, on the good side, maybe, um, this represents like maybe an improvement in interpersonal relationships in Brookings and shows that we can all get along, especially when we came together during the Chetco Bar Fire in 2017, I believe. I think it was 17. 16, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, and other times when we're in a rural area, we need and depend on each other. Come on, let's just have civil dialogue. I mean, it may, it may start off that way and then it, we, you know, we may, you know, last a minute before we argue and, and part, but maybe next time we can last two minutes and then right. maybe the next time five minutes. And, and then we can understand where everyone is coming from. They don't bother to listen to us ever. Uh, and, and it's clear that even when they, uh, you know, kind of uh, allude to the fact that they're going to do something, they don't know the meaning of the word transparency. And maybe Robert can lend them his Oxford English Dictionary, <laughs> <laughs> although I doubt they could even lift it. Um, <laughs> so That's the well, main it's, reason it's I didn't just... bring it to the yeah. meeting. <laughs> you can't lift it either. Thank, we thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Although I've always wanted to see one. Uh, I, I just by. think it's it's amazing that somebody can use the word transparency and then do what they did. I, within I, minutes. Within minutes. And <laughs> while kind of while saying the word, right? It's like, no, no, no. What is your definition of transparency? That's not it. You know, that's not that's not it at all. Right. And uh, giving the public 24-hour notice, sliding half, something maybe. in on on the end of an agenda and giving 24-hour notice about that when it's that huge a deal. That's not transparency. Another thing that happened in this election is the three of them apparently put out a mailer postcard with their signatures on it without yep. the requirement of identifying who paid for the mailing. Yep. That's another example of scoff law behavior yep. and against the law. And, I, I yep. use the word scoff law, and I, I want to talk a little about it because it's, it's so appropriate here. Uh, the Oxford English Dictionary explains it as... Uh, uh, the uh, non-compliance with a law, especially uh, or, uh, with an item of uh, with an element of contempt, uh, especially laws that are not easily enforced. Now, unfortunately, in this land, this applies to the Supreme Court supremely, and I have special names for them, but I'll avoid them right now. <laughs> uh, but uh, the whole attitude around here by the uh, re uh, recall three or the scoff law three, you want to have it that uh, this is Brookings. We do things differently. The law doesn't apply to us. The Constitution doesn't apply to us. The things about identifying who, who sends out mailings doesn't apply to us. Yeah. What makes Brookings that special? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well uh, I have a uh, lot of opinions about what makes Brookings special. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, speaking speaking about the uh, the mailers, I and uh, three or four other residents of Brookings have contacted the Secretary of State's office um, about the um, about the mailers, and they've opened an investigational report, and will let us know what the findings are. Great, good. So, so just because we're we're kind of running out of time here, and I'm I appear to be the one who's checking the clock. 
Um, <laughs> let's let's talk about what the people out there who are listening to this can do to support where we're at. I mean, it seems to me that the bottom line is, is Janelle going to be terminated? And there should be some letters going to the city council now that say, this was the point, you better do it, and you better do it now. Thoughts? I think, well, aren't I, they going to say that, oh, we're so limited now, there's only three of us to make decisions. We have to there are quorum. keep her at least until we have a full council. <laughs> Do their jobs. Huh? Do their jobs. Yeah, Don't exactly. do their jobs that do you shouldn't job. be doing. Do your job. You said the, you were going to terminate her. Now do it. The, there, there's also questions of other ways to make uh, opinions felt. Uh, there's talk of a march. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, uh, there's kind of a, a media void in many ways around here, uh, getting the pilot to even acknowledge that they've received opinion pieces that you sent to them three times mm -hmm. uh, and not published at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but there, there are ways to get the word out that are uh, possible now that haven't been before. Uh, on St. Tim's Issues, on my own uh, YouTube website, I put a whole playlist of five or six different things where people from different points of view have discussed the issue. And that can be done on this issue as well. And to just keep letting people know that this is outrageous, it's undemocratic, it, defi it goes to the very basic of how people can govern their own community. And if people who are rejected overwhelmingly by three, uh, by 70% votes can somehow engineer the choice of their successor as opposed to being chosen by the people, that is so undemocratic. We have to keep saying it again and again it's until it's heard. Yeah, it's appalling. And I, I do want to put it out again, even though uh, neither Andy nor Isaac answered my email. Uh, I would love to have one or both of you on my show, our community. I would love it if you would come on the show and answer some of the questions. I won't attack you, but I do want some answers. I think that people of Brookings actually deserve some answers. Amen. All right. The anybody other, have any last? Yeah. The words? other the other option is to recall Hodges and Martin. Well, we could do that. And uh, yep. I I just hope that that uh, and that's not off the table. Mm -hmm. uh, I I put feelers out, and uh, whereas a lot of our um, recallers have gone through tremendous pains and a lot of time on their part, even including in the rain, whether it was sign waving or or petition gathering or whatever. Not many of them were willing to go through this again. They make it very difficult for us, but um, uh, that is a possibility. Yep. Okay, we're down to about a minute and a half. If we could go around the table, if everybody wants to say some final words or sum this up. All right. Well, this is Candace Michelle, and I am saying don't let this pass. Do not let this pass. This is not democracy in action. Uh, this is Dennis. I want um, everybody to uh, to know that the city charter can only be amended by a majority vote of the qualified electors of the city of Brookings and not by the city council. And uh, the violate the city charter has been violated and 6,000 plus residents of Brookings should be offended. Pay attention. Watch your city council and remember to vote come November 2024. And if you find. Okay, Robert, you have 15 seconds. If you Find stuff that <laughs> is relevant to this issue, share it on social media, and let your friends know. Absolutely. Well, this is Ray Gary. I'm closing this out. I think this has been a truly historic uh, program. Uh, the eyes of the nation are upon us. And I would like to thank everybody that participated. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. And, and I will take credit for picking these wonderful people to come. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> <laughs> you have good taste. The opinions expressed here are those of the individual participants. Curry Coast Community Radio takes no position on issues discussed in this program.